Santos, me good Christian. Santos didn't waste much time talking, did they? Come on, Sergeant. Slightest attempt at rescue or revenge. Slinking away like scared desert rats. Or like foxes and rats, Major. You can hardly blame them if they'd rather fight on their own terms. After all, sir, didn't you? You don't approve of my tactics any more than you do my sentiments, huh, Captain? That's right, Major. This is my first patrol against hostile savages, Captain. And I don't intend to return to Fort Bowie without a trophy. Don't explain to me, Major. Save that for the ranchers and farmers. They're the ones who will pay for this day's work. Well, at least it'll bring those sulking cowards down out of the hills where we can get at them. If they don't get to us first, sir. <laughs> That'll be the day. The Apaches are a proud, independent people. No chief has ever been strong enough to bring all the hostile bands together for concentrated efforts. Not even the great chief Mangus, Colorado. But today, sir, I think maybe you might have done it. Thompson! How dare you use that high and mighty tone with me? I apologize for my tone, sir, but not for my opinion. I've heard some fantastic tales about that ugly weapon you affect, Captain. The enlisted men have a nickname for you. Tomahawk Thompson. I believe I'm beginning to understand why. It seems you're a lot more friendly to the Indian than to your own kind, Captain. I don't have to defend my loyalty, Major. My record takes care of that. As long as you're directly under my command, I'll have to order you to wear only the regulation sidearms. The tomahawk is not only a fine weapon in close combat, Major. It's also a mighty handy tool around the camp. Take it off. Regulations regarding an officer's sidearms are pretty loose out here on the frontier, Major. But if it'll make you feel better. Will that be all, sir? No. Select a burying detail and clean up that mess. Indians prefer burying their dead in their own way, sir. Especially their honored dead. Mount the men, Sergeant. We're returning to Fort Bowie. Yes, sir. Power up, men! Dismiss your men, Sergeant. Yes, sir.
don't have to bother with a written report, Major. Details are all here. Came in at dawn. Victoria must have gotten his report about the same time. Because he jumped the reservation. Victoria? Chief of the largest band of membranos in the Southwest. Friendly. Until he learned what you did to Santos. Oh, then you know already. News travels fast out here, Major. Even the laundress is not by now. Bring hostiles into the reservation. If they resisted, use force. Those were your orders, sir. I said nothing about deception and murder. Didn't you tell him anything? Why do you suppose I sent you along? You're supposed to be a veteran campaigner. Didn't you give him any advice? I'm not very good at giving advice, sir. Don't try to shield me, Captain. I assume entire responsibility, sir. The Captain was extremely lucid about your Indian policy out here, but I happen to think it's sentimental. Sentimental? Yes, sir, and I'm not alone in my opinion. Is that what they're saying in Washington? Well, you're awfully close to the problem out here, sir. They have a better perspective there, a better overall grasp of the whole problem. Then you'll be making your own report to the General about this affair. Not to the General, sir. To Congress. To describe our methods as sentimental majors, extremely wide of the mark. But you go right ahead, you make a report. Before it gets to Washington, we'll have those Indians back on the reservation or... a lot of us will be dead and past carrying. That's all, Major. Thank you, sir. You stay here, Thompson. I have a job for you. Yes, sir. Oh, don't worry, Major. We won't be talking behind your back. If it's fighting and information you came here for, I'll see that you get a belly full of both. These political officers. Well, it was coming anyway. Victoria has been itching for a good excuse. Now he's got one. Care to try some of this confiscated rot gut with me? Caught a couple of Tucson peddlers smuggling it into the reservation. Do you think it'll blind us, sir? It probably would blind our political friend, but not a couple of old sun-dried carcasses like us. What happened to the tomahawk? Confiscated, too. <laughs> Next time you feel like cutting us West Pointers, think of political commissions like the uh, majors. What's the job, sir? Nasty as the bribe? Could anything be this bad? I want you to do me a favor. Go to Tucson, bring back my wife. She went up with Maywood and his wife against my orders and refused to come back. Why pick me? Why not send Maywood back? He's afraid of her, you're not. Don't be too sure. Besides, there may be some Indians on the prowl. Why take the risk, then? Because I want her here, that's why. If I let her get away with this, no telling what... It's none of your business what my reasons are. Bring her back. That's an order. Yes, sir. She's staying with a family named Harper's outside of town. Yes, sir. Now, I want her back alive, and with that beautiful hair still on her head, do you understand? Yes. Don't you give a man a hand instead of standing around watching. Get on the other end of this box. This is no place for the woman of Victoria. Chanzana is no more the woman of Victoria. He says to me, Chanzana, you live long in soldiers' camp. Your mama was Mexican. We do not trust you. Go, stay with the soldiers. Seems to me you're in a bad spot, lady. We don't trust you either. I'm good to look upon. My flesh is strong, my skin is smooth. I'd be a good woman for you. Thanks, but it wouldn't work. Not in public, anyway. You think it's better for you, the woman of Colonel Garrett? What's that? With us, she's called a mountain cat. With her golden hair and her greedy eyes. I've seen a look at you with those eyes. You see too much of those black eyes, Chanzano. 
You see things that aren't so. I think soldiers touch mouth with their women. You do that with her, Thompson? Shut up! More talk like that and I'll kick you out. If Victoria won't have you, then the coyotes will. You're much man, Thompson. I'm much woman. We'll be good together. <laughs> Where do you go, Thompson? I'm at least a sly as Victoria. What you don't know, you keep to yourself. I'm your woman, Thompson. I talk only with you. Let me tell you now, before you go. Victoria is thinking only to kill many soldiers for the murder of Santos. That's to be expected. You were there. You did nothing. I was not in command. There was nothing I could do about it. Excuse me, Captain. The men are ready. Be with you in a minute, Gook. You better go to your quarters, ma'am. This late at night, the sentries might not understand. these Apache women have faces that would stop a clock. But every now and then you come across one, usually a breed. Drop it, Kook. Sorry, Captain. Stand shut! Mountain right out, Sergeant. Slowly. Yes, sir. Detail! Mount! Captain? Buck, you might be needing this long about now. Thanks, Coop. Where are we heading? Tucson. What for? A piece of baggage the colonel's got down there. This is at the Harpers are having company. Good day, ma'am. Colonel Garrett sends his compliments and requests your return to the fort. I'm your escort. I told Captain Maywood to inform Colonel Garrett that I did not choose to return just yet. I'm sorry if there's been a misunderstanding and you've made the journey in vain. There's been no misunderstanding, ma'am, and we didn't make the journey in vain. My orders are to bring you back. You're not only impudent, Captain, you're ridiculous. I'm not going. Bravo, Allison. Don't make trouble, ma'am. Just get in the wagon. Like this? The rest of your duffel can be sent on later. <laughs> this is getting too absurd for words. To be ordered about is bad enough, but to be rushed like this, really. I'm asking you one more time, ma'am. Get in the wagon. I most certainly will not. Stand aside, sir. This way, ma'am. Take your hands off our soldier. Do this to me! Put me down! Put me down! Take her away, Coop! Get me out of here! Get me out of here! You can't do this to me! Stop this fight! Let me out of here! Do you hear me? Let me out! Yeah. 
That's a lot of smoke for a cook fire, sir. Very Malone, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Yo! Go treat time! Yeah! 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 yeah. camping here tonight, Sergeant. When we finish the barren, we'll try to make it through the pass before nightfall. Every man works. Keep the dirt flying. Yes, sir. Detail! Follow me! Yo! Engines didn't wait around long, did they, Captain? You know the Apaches. They don't hang around the scene of crime. And that happened early this morning. Is, is that man dead? Oh, yeah. Deader than a doornail. Had his brains cooked over a slow fire. It's a favorite pastime with... Get on up there with the other men, Cook. Yes, Captain. My husband knew this danger, and yet he exposes me to it. He has no regard for me at all, and, and you don't either. find me amusing? No, I was just thinking how much out of place you look out here, that's all. I don't think that's amusing. Pathetic or tragic, perhaps, but hardly amusing. The frontier scares me. I should never have come out here. No, you shouldn't have. My husband's a very dominant man. He's a fine officer. You should have seen him five years ago. What a figure he got. He's aged, you know. Have you ever been in love? You were never married. Nope. If you were, it's not in your record. I know a great deal about you, Captain Thompson. You fought honorably in the war with the Kansas Volunteers. In 65, you were discharged with the rank of lieutenant. Two years later, you re-enlisted. After that, you were with the Army of the West at Summit Springs, Palo Duro, 
on the Rosebud with General Crook, and on the Little Bighorn with Terry's command. The military facts are all there, and I know them all. Yet I know nothing about you. You're a stranger. There's nothing much more to know, ma'am. I wouldn't say that. What happened, for instance, between enlistments? Went back in Kansas, bought a section in the land, and tried farming. Found a girl and planned to settle down? When you don't have enough to do, ma'am, it can cause trouble. Don't tell me the valorous captain's afraid of trouble. There's no point in riding out to meet it. Is it enough for you to dance with me at socials? To sit across the table from me and make polite conversation? And move your foot when it touches mine? Is that enough, Captain? As I said before, ma'am, you talk too much. Do I? Did the stupid silence of a half-breed laundress please you more? Captain! Indian! Out your horses, boys, slowly as if nothing was wrong. What are they going to do? Indians are great jokers. Just in case this is one of their serious days. Get in the bottom of that wagon and stay down. Keep your head down.
What are we doing here? Why don't we go on to the fort? We're resting the horses. They've had a hard run. Well, what about us? We're still 30 miles from the fort. We're only as strong as our horses. So we'll leave in the morning. Will they come after us again? Not tonight. Maybe not even tomorrow. They're hurt. The flying rocks. You haven't even taken care of it yet. That's no, nothing. Let me see. How can you live like this? No one to need you. No one to love you. That's what's so insidiously demoralizing, Major. To have to stand by and watch the slow and painful death of a culture that's much more adapted to these barren wastelands than ours will ever be. Exactly my point, sir. It actually would be far more humane to kill these people off as quickly as possible. I don't shock easily, Major, but that kind of talk does it. I believe in pushing through to the truth and living my professional life without emotion. You'll no doubt go far. You'll never make the mistakes of ordinary human frailty, will you? I never indulge in personal opinion, sir. I try to be bright, clean, mirror reflecting policy, nothing more. Tell me, Major, your method of extermination, is that a reflection from Washington? Well, certain congressmen would put it another way. They would simply say there's not enough room in Arizona territory for both red men and white. And I simply cannot accept that as a military possibility. I consider a war of attrition morally unjustifiable, or am I being too old-fashioned? If not of attrition, then what's your alternative? Talking to them? Yes, talking to them. But not now, later, when Victorio is more susceptible. To ask for a parley now after what you did to Sanus's band? That would be like asking for certain death. And meanwhile? Containment. Keep them confined to the hills, away from the settlement. Try to prevent raiding. It's a rather negative approach, isn't it? In the field. One in the Guadalupes, the other in the Dragoons. Attack the hostiles whenever and wherever possible. And if your losses were heavy? Against those savages? Give me a troop, sir. I'll march through Victorio's camp. By the time I come out the other side, he'll be begging for terms. Would you talk like that if you were in command? I would, sir. Tell me, Major. And since you're such a stickler for the truth, I want a truthful answer. Were you sent here as my possible replacement? Very possible, sir. After I've been here long enough to acquire the necessary field experience. Thank you, Major. Thank you for your bluntness. Oh! Excuse me, Major. My wife's just arrived from Tucson. I'm so glad you're here. I was worried. Were you? No trouble, Captain? Not too much, sir. We had a brush with the Apaches and lost one horse. We nearly lost our lives. I am sorry, Allison. You must be exhausted. Come on inside. Dismount your details, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Details. Dismount. Oh, glad to have you back, Allison. We missed you. Thank you. Dear, I want you to meet Major Wharton. The Major is fresh from the social circle in Washington. I'm sure you'll find him amusing. We'll be looking forward to your company, Major. Oh, thank you, madam. I assure you I most certainly will. Come in. 
if uh, Colonel Garrett should ask for me, uh, tell him I'll be visiting with Captain Maywood's wife. Darling? No. I'm too exhausted. Sorry I had such a rough trip. I don't care to discuss it. I wanted you home before the Indian trouble got too bad. You made me travel 80 miles across that desert knowing the danger. Could be more dangerous for you in Tucson. Allison, you're, you're so beautiful. Am I? I didn't think you noticed. I might not as be as attentive as I should, but I do love you very much, Allison. Stop talking about love. If you loved me, you never would have brought me to this godforsaken place. Why do you always make me responsible for something that I have no control over? Then how come other men advance, get responsible positions, there's Belvoir, Monroe, West Point, fashionable posts. But you have to get sent here. Allison, we've discussed this. Oh, I know, I know. You had big theories about protecting the great Southwest and how to manage the savages. You were so eloquent about it all, practicing the speech on me night after night. Well, look what it's got us. Politics change. There's been an election, a new cabinet. That's just your trouble. Big man of principle. Why can't you change your politics like your friends do? You could ask me to do this and, and still love me? Stop mumbling about love. Look at you. That filthy beard, those sloppy clothes. Five years ago, you were handsome and dashing. War hero with a brilliant future. Washington's most eligible bachelor. Now look at you. A tired old man who's always getting mistaken for a mule skinner. That'll do, Allison. Oh, no, it won't do, Colonel Garrett. I'm not quite finished yet. I've had a lot on my mind for a long time, and you might as well know the truth, the whole truth. You understand? Allison, I think you better get some sleep. Then it wouldn't interest you to hear about Captain Thompson, your most valued and trusted officer. Thompson? Yes. Quite a man, the captain. Attractive, attentive. Did he include in his report that he made love to me? Are you going to be philosophic about this too, darling? Allison, what are you trying to do to me? Perhaps I was curious to know what you would do about a lost wife. Jim, what are you going to do, Jim? I've been worried about a military problem. You've just given me the answer. Good night, Allison. <laughs> Company, ten, shut! Gentlemen, as Major Wharton put it to me yesterday, there are two possible ways of bringing the Indians in. Fighting them in or talking them in. I've decided to do both. Wharton and Maywood will each be in command of a troop to take the field immediately. Maywood, you scout west, through the dragoons. Make war on any hostiles you meet. Wharton, ride east to the Guadalupes. In other words, sir, you're going to make a show of force. Precisely, Major. If two troops are out, sir, won't that leave the fort unguarded? 
I doubt if even Captain Thompson has ever heard of the Indians taking a fort this side of the Mississippi. The Sioux under Crazy Horse almost got Carrington, sir. Almost, but not quite, Captain. The Sioux were a much greater aggregation than Victorio could possibly muster here. Any further questions? You haven't forgotten me, have you, sir? On the contrary, Captain. Earlier I said we were going to talk them in or fight them in. Trying to talk Victoria in. That's going to be your job. Point of information, Colonel. Didn't you say that to uh, try to talk Victoria in at this time would mean to risk almost certain death? Yes, there is that possibility. But in view of the risk, the captain is free to refuse. There may not be any risk, sir. Depends on the terms we offer Victoria. No terms. Unconditional surrender. But, sir, Victoria will chop Thompson into pieces and throw them at us. Maywood, when I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. Sorry, sir. Well, Captain? I'll go, sir. My compliments on your decision, Colonel. It's as forceful as it is simple. I, for one, am enthusiastic. Thank you, Major. Perhaps by thinking more along your lines, I too may go far. How many men will you need, Captain? Oh, Sergeant Kukas, I guess, if he wants to go. The less army, the better. Good. That's all. You can start at once. Hi. Want the latest gossip, ladies? We've got our marching orders. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? Honey, do you expect your husband to bask here forever in the luxury of this fort? There are Indians to fight. Oh, but we haven't had any trouble in such a long time. I'm spoiled. Don't worry about me, honey. Now, if I were in Thompson's shoes, you'd have something to stew about. He's supposed to try to talk sense to Victorio. I'd just as leave try and talk sense to a tiger as to that old cutthroat. Hello. Where can I find Victoria? Shenzana is at peace. She make no war with Apache. I'm not looking for Victoria to fight him. I want to talk with him. Ask him to come in. Victoria is very mad. Better not talk now. Later, maybe. My orders are to leave now. Do not go, Thompson. The colonel sends you to die. It's true. He fight with his woman last night. A sure man of information. She tell him you do bad things to her. Bad things? She tell him you make love to her. To understand a white woman is next to impossible. An Indian woman is even worse. Do you? What? Do you make love to her? Could be I refused her and she's doing that to punish me. Now tell me, where can I find Victoria? There's an old saying. A warrior who looks for death. Finds him. I'm not singing my death song just yet. But if you don't want to tell me, I'll go somewhere else. Thompson. I wanted to talk to him first, but now that you're here, Tom, he, he wants to kill you. He's sending you out to get you killed. I wanted to warn you not to go. I said before, you talk too much. Now you're thinking too much. Things that aren't so. I told him about us. That was a very unfair thing to do. No matter how you felt, he doesn't deserve that. Tom, take me away from here. I can't bear it here anymore. You don't want me, lady. Not half as much as I want you. All you want me for is a ticket out of here. It's not true. For once, you'll listen to me. You're everything in a woman I've ever wanted. I've never wanted anyone in my life the way I've wanted you. But you're not for me. You're for a good friend of mine. Is that plain enough? You'd rather go out there and die? At least it would be honorable. But if you feel like that, if, if you do love me... Let's stop talking about love. That's not what we're here to talk about. But you just can't let him send you out to be killed. Get that straight, too. He's not sending me out to be killed.
There's a tactical reason and a sound one. You just refuse to believe it, don't you? I've got a lot more faith in a good soldier than I have a hysterical woman. I've never been so humiliated to offer myself, to confess my feelings to my husband, and... You wanted to see me, Captain? Yes, sir. Will you excuse us, Allison? I wanted to talk to you about Victorio. I found a way reaching him. Good. Well, Captain, before we go any further, Mrs. Garrett's in a highly emotional state. Is there anything I should know? I'm not sure I understand, sir. On the trip from Tucson, was there anything unusual about the way she acted? Nothing unusual, sir. She was scared, of course. She fainted during the attack. But you don't look for bravery in a lady, sir. What do you look for in a lady, Captain? I don't want to take up any more of your time than I have to, Colonel. I came here to talk about Victorio. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, <clears throat> what about him? I've found a way to reach him. Good. Anything else? Just one other thing, sir. I'll be in the area assigned to Major Wharton. I'd like to have him kept off of my back until I've had my chance. Of course. A premature move on his part would make it look like a trap. You'd be the first victim. But not the last, sir. Oh, I'll make sure he takes every precaution. If I fail, sir, then the Major can move in and be any kind of a hero he wants to. I'll give him explicit orders not to attack until he's heard from you. Thank you, sir. Have you gone out of your mind? Possibly. Deliberately send him out to be killed? Deliberately send him out, yes, but not to be killed. My reasons are militarily and humanely defensible. Should he fail, however, it'll save us a nasty scandal. And I'm sure that even you'd prefer that to the notoriety of a pistol duel. If he comes back? As I said. Pistol deal. But it's not true. What I said last night is not true. Then why did you say it? Because I was desperate to get out of here. I still am. Sometimes I feel like I'm about ready to burst out of my skin. Sometimes I'm so tense, I'm so brittle, I... I can't understand you. You won't understand. And you won't understand that I'm helpless. That's no longer the point. Allison, last night you made an admission. Just what am I supposed to believe? What I said last night was true of me, yes. But not of him. I am the one who made the advances. Don't you see now why you can't do this to him? Allison, I've, I've never seen you like this. You talk like a woman defending the man she loves. Certainly, this is no longer a casual affair. Then you're a fool. Worse than that, you're a murderer. Correction, my dear. If Thompson dies, you're the one who will have killed him. <laughs> Lieutenant.
you give word, have the soldiers not come. They will not follow us. They will stay there on the flat until I have finished with Victoria. It will be death for us if your thoughts are bad. My thoughts are good. I will take you to the rancheria of Victoria. Change your mind, Sergeant. Ah, who needs hair anyway? Santos and kill him. I did not raise my hand against your people. I was not in command. You brave man to come see Victorio. I was sent here by Colonel Garrett. Many soldiers come from Fort. They will not come into the mountains till they hear from me. So what will it be? Peace or war? Victorio talked peace when Major Wharton hanged by neck for murder of Santos. The colonel will make no deal to Victorio. He says you either come in or die. Take a long time to die. Many soldiers die with us. Is that what you want me to tell the colonel? Thompson, you lead soldier here. Many soldier come into mountain. What's he talking about? Must be Wharton coming in. Do not kill them. I want them alive. Soldier woman.
Might be a trick, sir. Don't you believe it. We got them scared. Go see what they want. Follow me, Sarge. Oh, my God. 
Again. I'm sorry you had to choose sides, Chen Sainer, but I'm glad you picked us. I'm ready now, Captain. All right, man up. in the Dragoons. Get him back to Powwow Hill as fast as you can. Yes, Captain. A lot of Indian signs out there, Colonel Garrett. They don't doubt it a bit. I've got two details out shaking them up. Well, we'll see you next trip. I've been relieved. Major Warden's been advanced to Colonel. We'll take command. I'm very happy to hear it. Are you? Would it have made any difference had you known before you left Tucson? I don't know. Whoever knows what might have been. I'll get word to him. Whatever happens from now is up to him. By that, of course, you mean Captain Thompson. By that, I mean military matters and decisions, nothing more. As soon as Wharton takes over, I'm, I'm to leave for Washington. Will you be coming with me? I'll be leaving with you, if that's what you mean. No, that's not what I mean. For the time being, I'll be content with this. Apache! Try to break up the wall, we'll stand them off there. Get going! Where they get range? Make each shot count!
give me a hand. Barricade that window. Keep up the fire. and I have two fresh horses. Sergeant, bring up two horses, quickly. You wait here, Tinzana.
Turn, Wharton? No, sir. Maywood. Wharton was killed in his entire command. His promotion came through today. He was to replace me. Funny, I can't feel anything about him one way or the other. But I'm sure that's the way he would have wanted it. Yes, sir. Oh, Tom. I've done you a great wrong. I wonder if you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Captain? Die? You won't die, woman. We need you around here. We're back in control, sir. We've captured all of the Indians. Very good. Make out a report, casualties, you know, and put the place in order. Soldiers do to their wives. <laughs> 